This is Whiskey Whereabouts. I'm Tim, and it's Malt Madness Week 3, the Scottish Wildcat Group. We've got five 15-year age statement single malt whiskeys. This is the tightest, most competitive, most evenly matched group that we have had in the tournament so far. Who are you picking? My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here with you on Whiskey Whereabouts. So if you're not familiar, Malt Madness is a series of five tasting flights. Five whiskeys each, 25 whiskeys total. I took these samples from the really good whiskey companies, Cask Explorers Premium Scotch Whiskey Advent Calendar. I seeded them and we are picking a winner from each group who will compete to be crowned the champion. And if you haven't uh, seen it yet, if you didn't see last week, uh, group two, put it up right here for you to link through and check out. So here we go in group three. And first, let's meet the competitors. Starting from the lowest seeds to the highest, the 19 seed, Bob Blair, 15 year, a 46% ABV whiskey. It's bourbon matured and finished in Spanish oak. It's non chill filtered, there's no color added. Next up, the 18 seed, Aberfeldy. 15 year, it is finished in red wine Napa Valley casks. It has a weak presentation, 43% ABV. It's chill filtered, it has color added. Next up, the 17 seed, Ben Rennes, 15 year, but this is single cask Ben Rennes. This is not the flora and fauna, and it was distilled in 2007. It comes via the Douglas Lang old particular line. It's 48.4% ABV whiskey, and it was matured in a refill Hogshead. If you don't know Ben Rennes, whiskey that generally goes into Johnny Walker. Next up, the succeed. Ben Romack, 15 year. A whiskey that certainly has its fans, but it's not very well presented. It's 43% ABV and it has um, likely chill filtered. It's no color added and it is matured in sherry and bourbon casks. And the top seed in the field, the Kubakan. This is the 15 year, the 2022 edition. It's a 50% ABV whiskey, non-chill filtered and no color added. Kubakan means ghost dog. This is peated whiskey from Tomatin, it's lightly peated, but it is not simply peated Tomatin. It has a different uh, fermentation time. It has uh, differences in the uh, still runs. Competitors have taken the court. They've been poured. They have had time to breathe. It's a very exciting group because it's all single malts. It's the first time. No single grains, no blends. We've got two whiskeys in the field with some peat influence. It's two whiskeys with 43% ABV. So this is a pretty closely matched group here um, in the third group. And I'm gonna start as I always do over on this side and work my way through the whiskeys, starting with whiskey number one. Yeah, so it's a pretty sharp nose. There's a little heat here. It is citrusy, it's vanilla. There's some grain here, there's some fruit. Cherry sweet cookie, sort of underneath that first wave. So overall, it's a pretty nice nose, um, very inviting. Now we're gonna check it out on the palate. Okay, so it's a little hot. Um, it's very sweet, apple, it has a sort of a caramel, you know, caramel dipped apple quality to it. A lot of black pepper as you sit with it on the tongue. There's some heat to it. Going back on the finish um, very quickly, just to separate, it's a long finish. It's pretty hot uh, and it is not uncomfortably hot, but I can feel the sort of warmth as it as it is sort of spreading down kind of around around here at this point after having taken that second sip. And it is, the most interesting part of the whiskey, it is still sweet, but in addition to that heat, it's almost like a like a peanut butter on the finish at first. And as it as it runs, you stick with the heat and you get a real it is more savory. It is it, it's almost it's almost a meatiness after sort of a, a peanut butter kind of rich um, as it goes. It's, it's pretty nice. Okay, so whiskey number two's up on the nose. Yeah, this is a, this is, this is a rich nose. It has a grilled sort of, sort of meat barbecue flavor to it. Yeah, there's just embers. So really, a really welcoming nose here. You know, we're talking about some of these whiskeys having some sort of peat influence, but we're not talking about Isla whiskeys. We're not talking about Island whiskeys. We're getting a different type of sort of a peat. Yeah, I'm getting that low sort of embers, like fading away fire. And there's a sweeter element that runs with it, but it's not like barbecue sauce. Pretty nice vanilla, almost caramel kind of sweetness to it. 
Now on the pallet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's long. The pallet is rich, okay? So it is like the ash, like mostly burnt wood. Sort of ashy remaining kind of fire uh, smoke around. There is a rich sort of meatiness. The sweetness is at its at its most, and it is syrupy. This is a rich whiskey. It is a step up from the first whiskey. This whiskey is good. This is the sort of next step up for the finish. Yeah, that palate is, as, as I'm acclimating to this, going back to it, that palate is really nutty. Um, more than meaty. And I'm getting on the finish a fruitiness, a sweetness that is more, less of the sort of syrup and more of a, it, it's rich, it's like jam. I'm getting the fruit, I'm getting the smoke, I'm getting the wood. That's the last to fade. It's on the tip of my tongue. I've got a little bit of that honey-soaked, ashy wood remains. It's a really strong uh, experience start to finish here on whiskey number two. Checking out whiskey number three on the nose now. It's pretty faint, especially compared to these two. Apple juice, a little bit of brown sugar type of sweet kind of watered down icing. Yeah, the more you sit with it, the more you acclimate with it, it's it's getting a little orchardy. There's something else underneath, a little bit more woody. It's not very hot. I'm really dragging on this trying to find it. I'm not I'm, I'm not getting a lot of heat from it. Checking out on the palate now. Not a not a very big mouth feel. I, I would expect this to be one of the lower ABV whiskeys. It's a little watery. It's a little unusual. It, it, it has it has a sherry adjacent, but it's so muddled. It, it's kind of a brown sugar kind of sweet. It's a little woody on the palate. It's hard to parse out a lot more flavors. The finish is medium. It's the first time you get any sort of heat, and you get sort of a slight muted plume of a little bit of a heat kind of into the sinus once it goes. What you're left with is the sweetness, the wood, a little bit of a sort of an aftertaste. It's not unpleasant. It's not rich. It's just there. Um, this is a step down from the previous two whiskeys. There's not a lot going on here. Next up, Whiskey number four on the nose. That's quite a nose. Yeah, this is um, very interesting to have these flanked like this. These, these, these were placed randomly, if I didn't say that already earlier. I don't know which is which. Oh, what a nice nose. <laughs> it's, um, there's a savory element. There is a wisp of a smoky kind of element. There is a vanilla. There's a cotton candy sweet. It's not very hot, but there's a little bit of a sort of a perfumey element to it. Yeah, this is a nice whiskey. On the nose, on the nose so far. It's definitely a floral sort of gardeny sort of element to it. It is pretty uh, intriguing. It's an intriguing nose. Let's see on the palate what this whiskey delivers. We got a pretty nice whiskey here. Um, mouthfeel isn't fantastic. Um, it's a little watery but it's rich. It's rich on the palate, a little tiny bit. What feels like a, a kind of a smokiness. That kind of plumes in here in the finish and you get it in the sinus. Sort of a honey sweet, you know, maybe smoked bacon, smoked ham kind of kind of trace element. It stays kind of in the sinus and on the back of the tongue. This is a savory whiskey. This is a nice, this is a nice whiskey. This is a nice experience. Got that sort of ashy, sort of burnt end kind of flavor on my tongue. I want to go back uh, just because I kind of skipped the palate a little. I want to go back on the palate. Yeah, honey sweet, um, wood, a little bit of that flavor, that crusted on, sort of grilled on kind of flavor on the palate. But once you get to that finish, that's where you get that full effect. You get that sort of smoked kind of proteiny effect and it stays with you. I mean, as I'm talking, it's still right there in the sinus. This, this is a nice whiskey. This, this this is uh this is a contender. Moving on to whiskey number five. On the nose. Yeah, this whiskey was so bold here. I wouldn't say huge, but bold. This one's a lot more subtle. It's nice though. Nothing wrong with this nose. Berry, honey vanilla, 
Little bit of a perfume quality to it. There's the ghost of something almost brassy, almost polishy. Yeah, as you sit with it, that element kind of rises. It's not off-putting. It's not as rich as the other elements. Once you get past that, you're getting more of that sweet, that honey sweet. Pretty, pretty, pretty decent nose. On the palate, whiskey number five. This is a richer mouthfeel. Yeah, short to medium on the finish. I mean, medium. It's still there. It's just subtle. It's a subtle finish. This is a whiskey with some rich flavors, but the overall experience is pretty subdued. Nothing's off. Very honey. Pretty vegetal on the palate. Not a lot of heat. On the finish, you're getting that sweetness persists. It's not very casky. It's not hot at all. And it has a pretty nice sort of as it as the finish develops it really that first wave kind of disappears it's got a little sort of a perfumey element whatever heat that's there is there but it kind of presents this floral kind of perfume kind of in the sinus it's nice and then what remains is a, it's a it's like a it's like a honey kind of lozenge type of aftertaste that's on the tongue um not unpleasant it, it, it's it's welcoming. I want to go again um, for another sip. It's not it's not bad. It's just this is a this is a whiskey that doesn't have a ton of you know complexity, and it's it's it has a richness in what is here, but it's not sort of overplaying um, any of the notes. It's certainly not unpleasant. I, I would I would I would certainly not. Um, send this whiskey back, turn down a pour of this whiskey. Okay, so now comes the part with the uh, judges withdraw to deliberate. The judges are me. I'm gonna kind of retaste some of these and, and compare, and then I'm gonna reveal my ranking. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, lay out my rankings from the weakest to the strongest winner over here. And we're gonna start, I don't think it should be any surprise, in the last place with whiskey number three. A pretty weak kind of whiskey, uh, not that much going on. Second place is going to go to whiskey number five. Not a bad whiskey, just not that complex. This is a pretty competitive flight. Uh, the third place uh, whiskey will be whiskey number one. And that leaves uh, these two, the um, sort of smokier whiskeys, uh, are battling it out for the uh, first place finish. I'm going to leave whiskey number four where it is, and I'm going to take whiskey number two and declare it the winner of the Scottish wildcat group so we have a winner and that winner is the kubakan it was very very competitive i want a full bottle of both of these whiskeys they were very very good uh best of luck to this kubakan as it advances and uh, we'll face the winners of the other four groups you do not want to miss uh, the remaining two groups or the finals so make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already that's what this big button right over here is for, and I will see you for week four next time.